Well, good evening. Carl Munson here with what would ordinarily be the Good Morning Portugal show from Expats Portugal. But it's the evening, of course. And why would we be here this evening? To talk to Ali Sheldrake, who, sorry, she just moved there. Ali Sheldrake is here to talk about her new book, her latest book, A New Life in the Algarve. Good evening to you, Alison. Great to have you back. Thank you, Carl. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And we've got lots of friends as well to introduce you to tonight, which we is great. Do. We do. We have some wonderful people waiting in our green room. I think the uh, refreshments have been made by Relish tonight, which is which obviously is the right choice. Uh, mm -hmm. Jessica Dunn is here, Evan Schmada and Clive Jewell are here. And we've also, uh, we, 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 I think we've lost somebody already, um, but we, uh, we also have Debbie, Debbie Burton, who will be back joining us soon. But let's talk to you first, uh, Alison, Ali. May I call you Ali? Kushka, Kushka. Yeah. This is your third book, isn't it? You've written two already. Tell us briefly, if you will, about those two, and then why you've written this third one, please. Okay, thank you. Well, it started off, we fell in love with a little village called Ferragudo in the Algarve 20 years ago. And we're actually this month celebrating 10 years since we actually moved out here to live permanently. So we bought a house, fell in love, had to keep working in the UK, which was a bit of a struggle. Um, and then eventually got to the point where David retired from the police. I handed in my notice. We packed everything up when we came out here to live um, and really fell in love with the Algarve and Portugal. It's just such a wonderful place to live, especially the food, the people, the beaches, everything. Um, and that kind of led me into thinking, I really ought to write this down. We were running a blog. Um, but a lot of those stories didn't really fit the blog and its format, so I kept them all to one side. Um, and then eventually thought, I'm going to put all these into a book and see what happens. Um, so last year, I ended up writing two books about our life out here in the Algarve. They were both published through Amazon. Um, and really from that, I realised that lots of people were really interested in our story, our life and our move out here to live. And I knew so many other people that had also moved out here which way am I going? <laughs> um, to live in the Algarve, that it it felt the right thing to do to start chatting to other people and see if their stories could come together into a book, which is the result of the new book, really. I've got 22 chapters, 22 different lives, all telling their story of how they ended up living in the Algarve. Fantastic. And this, this coincides and celebrates 10 years for you in the Algarve, I understand, as well. It does, yeah, it does. It's, uh, it's gone so quickly. It's uh, the best move we ever made. Yes, and a bit of a celeb intro, I think, a bit of a celeb forward in the book. Oh, yeah, I was really lucky. Well, I thought I'd ask, you never know, do you? But yeah, Mr. Sainty, Chris Sainty, who's the British ambassador to Portugal, agreed to write the foreword to the book, which was a real, real thrill for me. It really kind of the icing on the cake. So, yeah, so. absolutely wonderful. And I guess he, he couldn't be too partial because we have this ongoing uh, battle, really, don't we, for the best part of Portugal. Um, where do you think, what do you think uh, Chris Sainty feels about the Algarve between you and me? Ah, well, he tells you in the foreword. He's, I think he's got oh, a very good. for it. Yeah, I know he has, really, because obviously he lives and works in Lisbon, but he does say there's something special when you come through the Alentejo and hit the Algarve border. So it's, um, I'm afraid you're really up against it tonight, Carl, because all of oh, us. Yeah. Our Algarve lovers, so... Well, as the book suggests, new life in the Algarve. Let's bring them on now, these lovely people who who, who are uh, some of your contributors to the book. Jessica Dunn is here tonight. Evan Schmader is here this evening. We also have Debbie Burton and we have Clive Jewell as well. Good evening, everybody. Hey, hello. Hi. Good evening, Carl. <laughs> yes, um, welcome to you all. It's lovely to have you here. Um, and we'll hear a little bit from each of you. And I wonder if I could uh, start with you, Ivan Shimada, from Relish in Portugal. Tell us about Relish. Oh, Relish Portugal is the English language food and culture magazine for Portugal lovers everywhere. Uh, it comes out quarterly. And uh, we talk about all sorts of delicious foods from the north to the south of Portugal. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a delicious, passionate project of mine. Uh, which you do with husband Ray, I understand. I do, yes. Big part of the team. He's yes. Absolutely. And when I first spoke to you, because we have spoken on the Good Morning Portugal show, um, you were in Lisbon, uh, twice in fact, yes, um, and uh, you, you made your move to the Algarve. This is, this, the programme tonight, the book, is all about the, the life in the Algarve, the new life in the Algarve. What made you turn your back on Lisbon and go to the Algarve in this oh, way. Oh, now, <laughs> I do love Lisbon. Um, Lisbon is special, very special. But Lisbon doesn't have the ocean. It doesn't have the gorgeous nature 
that we have down here in the Algarve. I mean, think about our shores. When they think of some of the most beautiful shorelines in the world, yes, they're just outside my door. Yeah. I, I mean, how spectacular is that? And, you know, coming down here during the pandemic, most everything is closed, right? Life is really different. But the yeah. beaches and the cliffs are always there. Amazing, amazing. Uh, you, we have one of your subscribers here. Uh, Jana da Silva is here. We've got a few highs already uh, oh. from people who have joined us tonight. So Jana da Silva is here, who mm -hmm. will also love to read the book. We'll find out from Ali how you can get a hold of the book, obviously, before the evening is out here. Uh, DJ is here on YouTube. Bonoit, the UK. Very good use of Portuguese there. Uh, noted. And uh, Mike Campion from Maastricht tonight as well. So do shout out from the comments. Uh, everybody who's watching tonight and let us know or let us know what your questions are for these fine people who've made their home in the Algarve and yeah feel free uh, to, to ask them questions uh, Jessica Dunn is here as well good evening to you Jessica busy hello. I think yes hello um, that's your um, studio behind you I think right yes. I'm down in the studio doing last minute prep for we're hanging an exhibition tomorrow in all so, amazing um, okay. yeah Yes, I and if I, if, I, if I could just obscure you for one moment. Sorry, everybody, yeah. but look at this. Yeah, tomorrow, well, hanging tomorrow and opening up on Friday the 7th of May at uh, 17.30 at the Quinta Art Collective. Uh, what took you to the Algarve, Jessica Dunn? Um, my parents, when I was two years old, we came on holiday and we came back every year. And then um, I think it was in the early 80s, they bought a villa here and we just kept moving out here every every chance we got. And eventually we just ended up living here. It was kind of that simple, really. It became Amazing. a second home. And now we hardly ever go to England now, really. But I might have my kids were born here. They're, they're studying in England. And I'm just painting here in my studio in Bullock M. Amazing. So three generations, and as, as we can see yeah. from your name there, Dad, it, it was Clive Dunn, who I think yeah. first came to, to Portugal in 1965. Was it? Oh, yes, it would have been, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before your time, obviously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> absolute British comedy work, legend. Yeah, a, absolute British comedy legend, known by millions as Grandad, obviously. And only today I uttered the words, they don't like it up um, mm -hmm. I did yeah, that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, a classic line from, from Dad's Army. But Jessica, tell us what you love about the Algarve. I mean, a lot of people all over the world, you know, we, we talk to people every day on the Good Morning Portugal show uh, to people who want to come to Portugal. And, of, and, and for many of them, their first choice is the Algarve. Um, why do you think that is? Um, well, for me, it's obviously the sun and the light is a brilliant place for an artist to work. Yes, um, yes. There are so many artists down in the Algarve now. I mean, all over Portugal, but, but particularly in the Algarve. And just the, the landscapes are so inspiring and the coast, the sea, the beaches. You know, it's, and it's just a perfect place, really. To, it's the, kind of the laid back pace as well. It's very sort of suitable for the artist, isn't yes. it, Alison? <laughs> Well, yes, Ali is an artist as well, of course. So do you think in time there will be the Algarve movement of artists? You know, like how the Impressionists. Mm. I think they, they, they gathered in a certain forest in, in France, didn't they? It, will there be a similar sort of movement of artists that will be remembered from the Algarve in time? Well, hopefully. I mean, yeah. I've just joined a, an art collective called Kinter Art Collective. And we're a group of um, five, uh, actually English women, that are living in Bullock M. And there's a fibre artist, a sculptor. Fibre artist is Jane Rodenberg. Twan Adams is a sculptor. There's a mosaic artist called Andrea M. Bird and a portrait artist called Tracy Carson. And we've all grouped together. So, you know, it's just a great place to meet people who are kind of like-minded. Yeah, how and fabulous. It's quite possible. There's so many artists here. Mm. I, I, I didn't really realise that. I mean, I was aware that there were artists in the Algarve. I'm loving this yeah. idea. A movement and here are some of your colleagues here on it sorry to obscure you Ali for the moment there um, and, and Debbie as well of course but here are some of your colleagues in the King's Art Collective and that might be another good shout to, to anyone thinking about the Algarve if they're retiring to the Algarve and they've always wanted to to explore their artistic and creative side ideal place to do it right yeah and there's um the exhibition is in Oliao in um community a community art center 
called Recreativa Republica Catoz, and it's a beautiful old historic building that they've renovated, and they're doing um, live music exhibitions, outdoor cinema. There's a well, I think we've got Jessica's frozen for a moment. Yeah. There. Oh, she's back again. Sorry, oh, Jessica. We, your, your, oh. connection, your connection broke down. Only, only temporarily you're back now. It's absolutely fine. All right. How far did you get? <laughs> no, we, you, you just for, for the briefest oh, moment that we lost you. But yeah. I was going to ask you if um, if there are spaces in the collective. I mean, can, is, is there a rigorous um, uh, interview procedure to join you, you bunch of bohemian artists? Well, we're five friends and we're women and we all live in Bullock <laughs> That's it. So you, okay, that's the job to make. There's an art net. There's an artist network as well, the Algarve Artist Network, and there's another one, Alison. Yes, What's the Algarve Society of Artists as well? Yeah, there's quite yeah. a few different collectives and groups that come together and exhibit and work and and sort of go out on painting days together and all sorts. There's lots happening down here, yeah. definitely. It's a, a good creative place. Creative place for sure. A few more comments coming in before we talk to uh, Clive yeah. and Debbie. Uh, Sol this my son Solomon is waving hello to you all oh. in the other room. Apparently, so, you my waving to Solomon. <laughs> oh, good on you. Thank you. Appreciate that. And and um, I think there are pets around as well in your respective homes who might be joining us as well. Cats on the keyboard, that sort of thing. Uh, look at this. Ludwig Dingledein is with us tonight, everybody. Uh, by night from D D Ludwig Dingledein. Bon dia, all from all the way in Canada. Michael wow. Consiglio is here. Yeah, we have a very international audience. Ivan, I notice you have your fire on. Is it cold where you are? Uh, is, <laughs> is it a real, a real fire or is that an Algarve effect? Uh, I'm, I'm feeling the cold here tonight up in, uh, in the Aveiro district. So a quick question for you, Ivan, there. <laughs> well, I, I have to admit it is not really very cold at all here. Um, it's more of a mood setter and uh, we had a big hole. It was the fireplace. We didn't want a wood fireplace. We didn't want a gas fireplace. Um, it's an electric fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually an app. It's an app, isn't it? That you can, you, can well, it's, <laughs> you know, it's about, it, you know, it's about uh, nine inches thick and, uh, you know, fits in the space and it's got a ceramic heater that blows out. So, you know what? It's not cold, but it does get cool. And I think all of us will say, no matter where you live in Portugal, um, the houses are cold. You know, they're built for heat. Uh, yeah. So they're, they're, they perform really well in the summer when it's a million degrees out, but in the winter it, it's cold. So something like this is pretty awesome. It just takes the chill off. And it, you know what, it sounds ridiculous, but it's mesmerizing. <laughs> I think a lot of people's eyes are drawn towards your fire. This is them. While we've got you on screen, there's, there's your current cover from Ooh. Relish, Portugal. Uh, what are those on the cover there? Ah, goose barnacles, Persevere. Of course yes. they are. They're fantastic. All right, yes. we will, we will go to. And, and yeah, I'm obviously you've tried them yourself. Not everybody's cup of tea, right? They they are quite sci-fi looking, aren't they? Yeah, they are. But boy, what a delicacy! You know, just delicious. And the story that goes behind it, the the fishermen that 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 fish, it's dangerous. It's dangerous to get those those delicious little goose barnacles. That's what they say with all the expensive seafood, but I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. <laughs> Debbie, Debbie, I don't think, looks like a fan of, of the goose barnacle. There. Let's go no, to no, you now, no, Debbie. No. <laughs> Debbie Burton is here, everybody. Um, British Empire Medal, we'll come to that in just a moment. Uh, but your founder, tell us about the Alerta charity, please, Debbie. It's amazing what you've done with that charity. In the oh, yes. <laughs> um, well, it, it just kind of sort of happened. <laughs> it wasn't planned. <laughs> it wasn't planned or anything. Um, um, me and my husband, we used to live in Odiesha and, oh gosh, when was it? 2013, I think it was. There was a fire near the racetrack, um, which we could see from our house. Um, yeah. And then over Facebook, it sort of filtered through that the Bomberish needed water and food. Um, so because we live quite close, we took stuff up there um, and just saw what was going on, really. Um, and so the next we decided the next morning we would actually go and speak to the Bomberish in um, Lagos, which we did. And that was kind of the beginning of it. So the first year we just helped Lagos station <laughs> Um, and it was just in overwhelming emergencies. If they had more, you know, sort of like over a hundred bomberish um, 
fighting fires we would um step in and help with sandwiches and water and you know um provisions really we did it twice i think it was that year the following year it all kind of went very quiet and we also moved to sylves um so it was kind of convenient for me really because um, we were renovating a, an old house as well um and then um to do when where were we then 2017 yeah. monchique yeah. burnt yeah. um for about seven days and that was kind of the catalyst of alerta and um i was running the facebook page on my own where we we notify people of the fires um stay posting on the fire until it's out um and also doing the the runs for the bomberish um, so I kind of like realized I can't do this on my own anymore. It's got a bit too big. And um, we just started recruiting and the rest is kind of history, really. <laughs> um, so 2018, again, we had an even bigger fire, which started like north of Monchique and come down past my back garden and along to the Barrage M. Arad. And it was t 10 days in total, I think it was burning. And we just supplied the bomb bearish every day with food, water, energy bars, socks, pants, t-shirts, because all the bomb bearish that were coming from out from, from across the country, they literally have a 24 hour supply bag in the engines. And they were here for a week or more and hadn't changed their clothes or anything like that. So we were supplying toiletries, towels, um basic first aid equipment if they asked for it we got it like freeze with debbie there for a minute i want to ask her about oh yeah you yeah, froze for a moment yeah. a, a big beetle just fell on my head while you froze up as well <laughs> it wasn't I, me. I, I, I'm, surprised, I'm surprised i've stayed so calm there uh, maybe i should shut the studio window but I mean, <laughs> you, say, you say the rest is history there but i mean you you were involved in some legendary fundraising as well right which is a little bit unusual. Could you tell us about that? Um, like what? What? Like the swimathon? Yes, that one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, many, many moons ago, I used to swim for the county for Wiltshire, um, and was um, a competitive swimmer. So swimming is just comes naturally to me. I don't run or anything like that energetic you know at least with swimming there's some buoyancy isn't there and I'm supported <laughs> um so um and every year I try to swim we've only got an um, above ground circular four and a half meter pool but I try to swim every day every summer so obviously last year you know it was locked down and everything so we couldn't do our normal fundraising so initially I decided that I would do it from the 1st of May to the 30th of September, which is sort of critical, well, not totally, you know, it's fire season, yeah. um, which was 122 days. So I thought, oh, I'll do a kilometre a day, which was 225 whips or legs, whatever you want to call it, you know, 4.5 metres. <laughs> As I got fitter, I started doing more. So my 122 kilometre target um, eventually turned into 147 kilometers that I swam in 122 days. So I had a frozen shoulder. I got through free swimming costumes because the chlorine in the sun rotted them. Mm. <laughs> um, and I was like super fit at the end of the summer. <laughs> Imagine, but like 225 widths of the pool. I mean, yeah. your I mean, if you have neighbors that can see your pool, they must have been thinking, she's still in there. And yes. like an hour <laughs> she's still in there. An incredible, an incredible um, effort there. Um, and the, I think the alerts are off. We're back in business today, right? You mentioned the fire season. This yeah, very we, day, the volunteers are back. Yeah, the volunteers are all back online today. Uh, we've already posted um, fires today in the Argave. Really? Yeah. Um, wow. So, so we're yeah, we're getting ready. We're getting ready to support the Bombarish. We um. All summer, we we all have um, it's like nine of us on the associate style. So we're yeah. all allocated um, a few stations each, um, you know, build relations and all that. Um, 
So we contact them every month to see if they need any um, water or energy bars. And then, like, if there's a big fire, then we um, buy, um, like, sandwich making, so, you know, ham, cheese, fruit, um, yeah. basic um, medical supplies. And then... So, yeah, they can, they can make a, 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 a mishta, a sandwich mishta, the legendary... Yeah, yeah. Mishta. <laughs> yeah. But, and, and, and obviously, they, you, you need ongoing support. Alerta, I've got it right there in the, on the screen. If, if people look up Alerta, they can support that way, can they? Yeah, A-L-E. yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, Alerta de Incendio, uh, Flourishdale. So, okay. and at the end of every season, with any funds that we have left, we buy... Uh, replacement forest fire uniforms and I think to date we've bought something it's around about 170 uniforms we've bought uh, since 2018 and they cost 350 each wow so, absolutely absolutely incredible Debbie and and, and mm-hmm. you are Debbie Burton BEM British Empire medal yeah um, and, and you were you were given that award because of this fundraising yeah or something well, well you- um I think uh, my my citation reads. Um, oh God, what's it? What's it say, Clive? I can't remember now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, for support to the, to the yeah, community. To the community. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's it? What's it like to 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 receive a civic award of that kind? Were you shocked when it, when when you found out? Yeah. 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 I. I um. There's a bit of a tell. <laughs> what? I. Um. I'd been out shopping. I came and I, I had three dogs at the time and I was walking through the door. The dogs were like, hello, mummy, jumping all over me. But I am full of shopping and the phone was ringing. So I answered it. I just went, hello. <laughs> I actually do. And um, this um, this person on the air, so on you, and this is Mr. St. I'm the ambassador to Portugal. And I was like, okay, who's taking the... <laughs> 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 so I kind of like went along with it and the more he talked I thought no this isn't a joke this is real because <laughs> I was about to say you know stop taking the mickey that yeah yeah, on, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah and when I um eventually got to Lisbon to receive my medal which was absolutely beautiful I um af- after the ceremony I was like they were doing a photo call and I was stood talking to the ambassador and I actually told him this story of like when he phoned me up and there's this photo of both me and him with this raucous laughter and that's when i told him that i almost told him to be on <laughs> <laughs> amazing well i can understand why you did that but you have absolutely well deserved award so thanks for joining us tonight there'd be amazing <laughs> no story. Problem. <laughs> and, and people obviously will want to, to continue to support your wonderful work and, and you asked clive there um a question because of clive of course <laughs> in these processes and is, of course, the vice consul working in Portimao for the British Embassy. Uh, good evening to you, Clive. Sorry it took so long to get around. Good evening, round. Carl. And, uh, it's are, a, are it's a party for evening? everyone. It is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's lovely to have you here. Could you tell Thank us you. What, what a vice consul does um, it, for the, for the uh, embassy? Yeah, there's a, there's a question. I wonder if that <laughs> one's coming. Um, well, I mean, essentially, it makes me res- responsible for the, for the con- vice consulate here uh, yeah. in the Algarve and the team uh, that works in it um and therefore i'm i report to simona who i know you know well um and has been and has been on here with you before um so as part of the consular team there's another vice consul Gillian herculano who is is astonishingly experienced with uh, 35 years i think experience jill has and she's based in lisbon so jill and i sort of between us manage the team and the day-to-day um affairs and the casework um that goes on uh, not just here, but also in the Azores and Madeira, and we're actually also responsible for Cape Verde Islands, um, oh. as there. Although they, uh, Cape Verde comes under a different embassy, Senegal, Dakar, actually, but of course is Portuguese speaking, whereas uh, Senegal is is French. Therefore, ah, it didn't take her long. Here she is. Welcome, Celine. Hello, hey. <laughs> Celine is back. Thanks, Celine. Um, I'll, try and keep her under control but yeah so um yes that's so that's what we do uh, that's our day-to-day um essentially uh, managing the team and managing the casework i guess jill and i will become directly involved in cases that might become particularly high pro- <laughs> the water's going to go in a minute um that might become <laughs> high hey! okay um, that might become high pro- 
a high pro no we're good we're, we're safe um yeah high profile <laughs> stuff um and, and the like and i guess without um you can't avoid the fact that we've been involved uh, of course in the whole process since um the uh, six for Brexit, basically. I was um, going to say to you, you've had quite an interesting year with, with one thing and another, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, COVID, COVID, the COVID year. Yeah. I mean, when that when that kicked off, um, we were it was pretty much crisis mode for us for a, a considerable period of time. She's determined oh. to, to be in this show. So <laughs> it's fine. Sits, we're, we're we're good with that. Sit, we're good with that. Sits, it's, it's, it's entertaining for still. the rest. It is. It is. It is. I was trying to peep underneath, but um, we know yeah, you. So that was a, we know you there. That was a busy time. Uh, needless to say, um, I mean, at, at first, uh, in in Cape Verde, for example, there were something like, I think, six hundred people were in lockdown in two hotels there, which um, which Tui, the tour operator, were managing locally, but uh, we got involved with that. So, you know, people in in Funchal who were in a hurry to, to get out of there because the flights yeah. were going to stop quite soon um, and sooner, in fact, than here. Um, so, yes, that was quite that was quite challenging. And the, the Brexit process, <laughs> there's well, a, I've got a, a real double whammy of things for you to deal with in your official capacity. That's the, that's the job. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's why that's why we love it. Yeah, so that's you on an official level. I mean, everyone's here tonight, of course. Sorry again for blocking you, Debbie and uh, Alison there, but this is what we're about tonight. Uh, Alison's book, A New Life in the Algarve. And Clive, I want to ask you, did you come to the Algarve because of work or were you here anyway? I did. No, okay. I, I, I was, uh, whoops. Uh, <laughs> she's learned even how to um, how to interfere with the screen instructions. So um, they, no, I was, I was sent Cats do courses, you know, cats do courses on how to disrupt she's the Zoom call. very clever. They know she's exactly very, what to do. She's very sweet and she's very clever. Um, yeah. I was sent, I was, uh, I was, well, I say I was sent here. I was asked to come here at the time I was working in, I, before I got involved with the, the embassy and the concert, I was 30 odd years, 33 years in the, in the travel business. So, um, I'd already been working in Spain for some years and, um, Italy in the winters in, in ski resorts in Italy. Um, and in fact I was in, I'd been in Minorca and the Costa Brava. And then I'd been, I was, I was in the middle of a summer season in Ibiza, um, and my boss phoned me and, and sort of cryptically asked me how my Portuguese was. Um, which, well, uh, how do they do that? Like by saying sort of, <laughs> bon dia, tudo bem, and see how you cope with that. No, it wasn't even as subtle as that, Carl. It was, <laughs> how's your Portuguese, Clive? Oh, right. So, um, you know, even the, even the not the brightest spark uh, could work out that that was where it was going to be my next posting. But, um, yeah. you know, and that's, but that's how it was. That's why I joined the, that you know, that's why I wanted wanted to get involved in that side of the travel trade is because I wanted to experience living in different places. And although primarily Spain was my first love uh, from from a very young age, um, you, you, my my way of looking at it was I would go where they asked me to go. You know, I, I would always say yes because uh, it's a fantastic experience. You know, I worked in Crete in a winter of all which which is what it sounds like you know it's, it's it's the summer destination is crete but in the winter it was it was it was extraordinary because you've got oh, what i didn't know before i went there was um there are the white mountains this huge island but there are the white mountains behind Heraclea, which are snow capped in the winter mm. so you know those sorts of experiences and um and then coming to here you know it just builds up a whole body of i tell you the biggest the biggest one for me is tolerance because you know living in those different countries you, you just understand that, you know, every, every, everyone's got their way of doing things. Everyone's got their way of living. And, and if you just join in with it and, and go along with the flow and, and play your part, then, then it will be, it'll be brilliant. And that's certainly how my experience has been here. And it's 32 years now. So. Is it really? The <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot of change yeah. at that time, obviously, as well, in, in, in Portugal and in the Algarve. Yes, I think, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I think for, a quite, for quite a period... Um, and Jessica knows this. So, I mean, Jessica um, and I, uh, I sort of go back a long time. I know Jessica, you'll know my colleague Margaret or my former colleague Margaret um, Bailey from back in those days. And, um, you know, I think for, for, for a period, you're kind of a bit cocooned in that tour operating world because it's seven days a week. It's pretty, it's full on. People are on holiday, you know, you can't, 
you can't um, the team can't take the weekend off um, when you've got three thousand people arriving at Faro Airport anyway. <laughs> so for a while, you, one was you felt a little bit cocooned in our in our travel world. But once you know, once things got settled, um, and you started experiencing being here, um, mm. I think very much as Ivan was saying, um, you know, my my love for here. Apart from the fact that it's the it is the easiest country that I've ever lived in as a foreigner. To live here as a foreigner is so easy. Um, I think you're. I, I've never felt anything less than a hundred percent welcome. Um, Isn't that lovely, that, to everybody? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Incredible. That's so lovely. And to think you were in Ibiza thirty-two years ago. Oh, I mean, that's, yeah. That's, that's a pretty cool claim to fame, I have to say. Long before everybody else went there. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, it was it was quite lively at the time, um, particularly particularly in San Antonio, which it still is. I, I went there a couple of years ago um, for sad reason. Actually, a friend of mine who'd settled there, a former colleague of mine, had died, and uh, so we were going to to, to do a memorial there. Um, so a lot has changed there, as as it does yeah. everywhere. Um, yeah. So maybe glad, to, island. maybe glad to get to the Algarve for a rest after Ibiza there. Uh, Clive Jewell, who's with us tonight. Yes. Among many wonderful people, uh, Ali, Ali in the middle there, uh, author of the new book, A New Life in the Algarve. All these lovely folks are featured in the book. If you've got questions of a vice consul, if you've got questions of a legendary fundraiser, if you've got questions for somebody <laughs> who's created Portugal's almost foodie mag, and the wonderful bohemian artist who is Jessica Dunn. Just put him in the comments, please. And of course, the uh, author herself, uh, Ali. So let's see what people are asking in the comments tonight. Uh, we are moving, says Gareth, uh, from South Africa to the Algarve in about a month. I bet they're really uh, Gareth and family are glad they've tuned in tonight to hear what you said, Clive. Uh, four adults, two children and two cats. Very excited. So a new playmate for the great news, Gareth. Uh, Benoit Alegria. Um, the Wolverhampton. It's great, isn't it, to go from Bonnoy de Alegria to Wolverhampton. Uh, <laughs> uh, Carlos Vitor there. Uh, Tracy Hopkinson. Hello, everyone, from a cold West Yorkshire. Are we going to rub it in and tell everybody what the temperature's like in the Algarve tonight, everyone? <laughs> Got uh, the fireplace on. on. Yeah, the fire's on. Is this, yeah. is, this a, is this a good place to mention that actually I had a day off today and I was on the beach? So. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Tracy. Sorry, Tracy and Carlos. Uh, did any of you consider other regions, uh, such as Kashkai, Central, etc., before settling in the Algarve? Would anyone like to talk of their uh, other exploration of Portugal, or did you all just naturally gravitate to the Algarve? I think you know. We, we look. <laughs> yeah, come on, <laughs> Debbie. Debbie, you start with that, and Ivana, I think, will have something to say about that. As well. <laughs> um, well, we we came on holiday in the Algarve um, to begin with. Um, because um, we used to have a caravan and travel around in the caravan, um, mainly France or Cornwall. I wanted to go further afield, but Hubby had a fear of flying. So to combat that, I booked him a golfing holiday, and by pure chance, we ended up in Arvor. <laughs> we kind of fell in love with it. To begin with, I thought it was scruffy and horrible. Anyhow, we made friends and what have you, and before we moved, I... Um, I, we kind of like explored tentatively other areas, but because we've been coming to the Algarve and we had a social network already, we we came back and, and no regrets. Yeah. So yeah, yeah really, look, and our Portuguese friends that we'd made while we were holidaying, they actually helped us settle in. Yeah, amazing. Uh, Using that hospitality yeah. and that welcoming yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. If I am, I think you have an, another perspective because you travelled a little bit around Portugal. We have. Um, we've traveled all over Portugal. No, not all over Portugal. Most of the hot spots that people think about becoming expats in. Um, and really, I mean, like we can all say, Portugal is a wonderful and welcoming place. People are great and they're glad you're here. Um, Ray and I decided to live in the capital city. So we moved to Lisboa and we lived in Lisboa for three years. Um, and it's, it's, again, it's a wonderful city. There's so much going on. Uh, you know, so many historic little neighborhoods and whatnot. Um, and we did look in lots of different places around Portugal. We looked all the way up Porto. Um, we looked on the Silver Coast. Uh, we looked in Stubel. We really did think about Stubel. 
Um, but it was a lot like Lisbon, not quite walkable to the ocean, which was on our list. And uh, came down here and just decided that the Algarve was for us. Um, and then there's so many different towns in the Algarve. What is the right town for you? you know, we, we did. We had a long list of things that were deal breakers and things that maybe, maybe not we could live with. And we just found Lagos for us ticked all of those boxes. You know, and, you know, also, we don't want to have a vehicle. We don't want to have a car. Okay. So um, living in a city like Lisboa, no problem. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what it would be like if we lived in Uyao without a car. You know, in a lot of other places, it, it wasn't conducive to walking. Here, at least, we've got the train and we've got buses and whatnot. So, yeah, that was a big decision maker for us. Well, I think that will be for other people as well. So thank you for that tip. All right. Mm -hmm. um, Paul Richard says they come to the Argov Cold because it's simply the best. <laughs> There's <laughs> always, it's always one or two like this, and Paul, we know, is a massive fan from Harrogate in Yorkshire. Cheers, Paul. Good evening to you. Hello, everyone from a very rainy Liverpool. Hello to you, Jane. Uh, hello from the US, retiring soon, considering the Algarve. I hope uh, that, that your decision has been made all the easier tonight, Robin R. Uh, want to make friends and volunteer for many community activities. The obvious choice, Debbie, write down Robin R. Uh, <laughs> 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 Animal rescue, easy to make friends, get involved. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, easy to make friends and get involved. I think you'll find it is there, Robin. Uh, Ian Turner's here as well, um, who who's, um, helps us with our Growing Old Disgracefully programme on the Good Morning Portugal show. I think there's a bit of that going on in the Algarve. Uh, Bonoy Atoros, pouring with rain here in Hertfordshire right now and blowing a hooli. The Fovis, there you go, loved uh, Collure, uh, Collure, I think, in France near the Spanish border. So, yes, artists chasing light like uh, Jessica uh, and her, her, her collective. Mrs. T wants to mention, says Chris, she'll be picking her second crop of, this is a bit random, second crop of organic homegrown rhubarb tomorrow. She's going to experiment with stevia instead of sugar. Very healthy choice, Mrs. T. Buya Kasha. Very good. Uh, I didn't do that justice, did I? Algarve is the best <laughs> place to be, although the properties are on the high side. Carlos, are we talking about altitude or price there? Uh, probably both, right? Hola, <laughs> buenoi from Santa Fe, New Mexico in the USA. Oh. Hello, Jeannie. Did somebody want to say hi to, to Jeannie there? Was that you, Evan? That was me. Oh, well, Santa Fe, what a place. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Robert Ryan, uh, bon dia from Cornwall. Uh, Mari Bradbury, love Jessica's paintings and can't wait to move to Portugal. Uh, leave the nine to five and start painting again. A fellow artist, two more years until retirement. I think Jessica also a gifted linguist because you 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 told me how to pronounce Sadoval correctly. Sorry. No, 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 not at all. No, I welcome absolutely, Jessica. But I, I, it, I was thinking to myself, you, you, are you somebody who's embraced the language well? Because that does divide people, doesn't it? Yeah, well, we're having kids here who went to Portuguese yeah. school and their dad's Portuguese, so that oh. helped. I kind of learnt yeah. it from their age as little children. I learnt with them in a way. I'm not oh. fluent, but I'm pretty, you know, pretty fluent. Yeah. And presumably learning from a lover is quite a good... I mean, we don't need to go into the detail there, but I think it does sound like quite a good, quite a good method. Uh, from what you might be uh, well done. Good night. How are you? Uh, May Friday. I'm not sure what that means, but good night to you. Uh, good evening to you. I would love to connect with Debbie Burton with her charity, says Jana De Silva. We'll put you in touch, Jana. No problem. A uh, friend, of, friend of the show, so we'll get you, get you two together. What a fantastic accidental something to start. I take my hat off to you, Debbie, says Fiona Warren. <laughs> uh, Max Flight, Gareth Mack, you made a good choice. Lots of uh, South African people here. You will settle quickly. That's nice to know, isn't it? Uh, hi, all. Considering Portugal for retirement in two to three years from USA, could you all suggest some activities we could schedule for our upcoming visit this fall to get a true feel of the area, not just touristy stuff? One of these from each of you would be really good, actually, wouldn't it? Off, off the tourist track, what, what's a good way for Jennifer and family to get to know about the Algarve? Uh, four nights already booked in uh, Carvoeira. So what else would you recommend? Uh, let's start with you, Ali. Oh, well, I think a trip up to Monchique and Foyer is, is a definite because it, it's you're only talking about 40 minutes away from the beach and yet you're in a completely different climate, landscape and, and way of life. Um, and I think that will... And then from the top of there, you can look down and see half of the Algarve as well. So that will give you a, a good starting point yes. to just where else to go. Amazing view from up there, isn't there? Fantastic. Yeah. Clive, Clive, what would you recommend off the beaten track? 
Um, I would say, actually, I'd probably head, head in that case down to the other end towards the Spanish border and some of the little villages there and the coastal areas and maybe Santa, Lu um, Jessica knows, Santa Lucia for your octopus, Capital de Polvo. <laughs> My octopus. I thought you were, for a moment you were talking to me about my octopus. How does Clive know that? Um, but yeah, <laughs> great, great recommendation. Thank you, Clive. Debbie, off the beaten track, tourist wise. Um, I would say hire a car, get in it, turn off the sat nav, and just drive. Get off the beaten track, get off the A22, get off the 125, and just drive and explore and discover. That sounds really That's good. my advice. <laughs> I, I can see the movie. You'd be surprised. Like, yeah, Debbie, it's like, you know, you get the hire car and the, and the smartphone goes out the window. The hat yeah. goes up and off you drive into the sunshine. Fantastic. In fact, in, in to find you, find your way home, just, you know, head south, isn't it? <laughs> so you're in the ocean. Yeah. 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 It'll be fine. Yeah. Ivan, what's yeah. your tip? In that regard. Um, there are so many artisan food producers down here from yeah. Floor to Cell to Polvu, the fruits, the vegetables. We've got in Silvage the orange route, Laranja Rote, or Jessica, help me here. Rota <laughs> yeah. Laran Lo Rota Laranja, the the orange the route in Silvage. Yes. Um, but uh, there's there's so much not only art like Jessica, Jessica and Allison create, but food art. So it's well worth it if you like to eat uh, and you're interested in local local food products. Take your time, check it out. Get some of those goose barnacles down your neck, uh, Jessica. What would you recommend? <laughs> um, well, apart from going to Oliel, <laughs> which you can do on the train. <laughs> 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 um, well, I live in Bullykem, and if you go further inland from here, you go to Paden and all those little villages, you could, like Debbie was saying, if you just drove up willy-nilly up through those villages, it's, it's just beautiful. And there's yeah. also a river that runs along up there, which is so beautiful in the spring. Um, and you're mm. hardly, hardly anyone around. You can swim in the river. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Actually, up there as well, on the north of north of Sal Brash and Tavira, the Serra de Calderon, that yeah. area is astonishing. And I think a lot, it's a mountain range. And I think a lot of people mm. probably have, I, I don't think I'd been there right until the huge fire of 2012. Mm. And I drove around like, two or three days afterwards. And I was absolutely, I was gobsmacked. Mm. It, it was absolutely magnificent. And, and that's after 30 years, right? You still, you're still yeah. just getting amazing. <laughs> yeah, <things. laughs> absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that it's doing amazing? what Debbie said. Debbie, Debbie's advice is fantastic. Just drive, just, just head off. Portugal, very good country. I love Portugal. You're in good company tonight, uh, Maud. Definitely. Max Flight, Paul Richards, agree with you. Cash guys, you better have two million budget for a home, but anything under that. Uh, the Algarve is preferable, and uh, Max goes on to say, "Thanks for hosting this lovely guest. Nice chat. It's all Alison's fault tonight. Absolutely, <laughs> it's all my fault. <laughs> yeah, for sure." Um, Gareth uh, from Mike, congrats on moving. Did you organise schools for your youngsters, or are you going to sort it when you land? Uh, nice to see the community talking to each other as well this evening. I think we've even got a non-habitual re tax regime question coming up soon as well. I don't know how everyone's going to cope with that. But maybe a little bit <laughs> off piece for this book, uh, Alison. Uh, Max in the Agave, you can buy a property from 10,000 euros to 10 million euros, <laughs> but the people are the same, friendly. That's a really nice observation, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and uh, Maud saying, uh, open a visa, Portugal. I come there, I'm interested for business in your country. A good place to start a business as well. And we do need to, to, to re stimulate the economy, uh, Maud. So I'm sure you'd be very welcome. Uh, Sarah, watching in Brighton in the UK. Really enjoying hearing everyone's stories. My Do you know Sarah, uh, Jessica? She's my friend. Oh, fantastic! Uh, <laughs> for that, um, has she bought any of your pictures? Has she got? Has she got an original uh, done in the living room? Yes, she has. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, Juan, I see. Oh, Juan's a good friend of the show. As soon as as possible, I will stay living in my neighbour country, Portugal. So, a Spanish person uh, looking to come to yeah. Portugal. Um, Muy bien. Look, uh, Celine, star of the show. Uh, Guida Pereira, um, signed photographs. Will oh, be Guida. Hi, yeah. Guida. Uh, <laughs> that, that's a beautiful painting behind Jessica. A uh, second mm -hmm. comment from, from Hilton. Could you, oh, tell us, you. could you tell us a little bit about it, Jessica, please, while, while, while we're remarking upon it? About this painting? Yeah. Um, it, well, 
it's part of my blue series, <laughs> unsurprisingly. But um, it's just, it's an abstract landscape, landscape, seascape. You can see really whatever you want, but it's inspired by the sea and the sky and the landscape here. So this, yeah. you can't really see the. I, I could try and show you the. <laughs> No, oh, thank, you, thank you. That's great. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. And, and I'm sure that's made made Hill's evening as well. That's wonderful. Thank you thank very you. much. Um, Stephen Wells, uh, Clive in the middle of a summer season in Ibiza. Sounds like he was doing a DJ set. Probably did. He's a man of many talents. Uh, Virginia <laughs> Larson, a la bon night from San Francisco Bay area. Um, mm. Were you a DJ there, Clive? Did you do any of that? Uh, I didn't in Ibiza. No, I did it in the UK for seven or eight years, and I did a few here and watched this space. I is all oh, I will say. Yes, that's exciting. Uh, please put us on. Uh, put us on you. Oh, look, he's got his cans there, ready for it. Um, we would love to be the first to know about that. How long would you suggest renting before considering buying? How long does it take to thoroughly explore the Algarve and decide where you want to settle? So more than thirty years is the answer to the second bit, right? Um, is it Folks, is it easy to, to start renting in the Algarve and having a little, is, would you recommend that strategy? Who's done that? Yeah. I think one yeah. of the things to do is to try and look at renting off season. So actually come out here from about October through to April and get a real sense of what the Algarve can be like in the winter. I think if you're particularly for thinking of moving out here, the summer is obvious. We've got the sun, we've got the beaches, we've got the tourists. We, you know, it's, it's a busy place in the summer. But I think particularly if you're looking at finding somewhere to rent, have a look at the winter and make sure it's the right place for you when things quieten down a little bit and you can find a beach that nobody else has walked along all day. Um, so advice. Time as well. but yeah. yeah, I'd take a good six months at least um, and maybe rent in two or three different places and, and get an idea. It's, I mean, there's lots of advice and help. There's lots of great forums online, particularly on Facebook, where you can get advice as well from people. Yep. Um, and cheekily, of course, you can read my books and then you can get all of <laughs> advice because I've tried to write books that aren't just our memoir stories. They're about a guide to the Algarve as well. So there's a whole range of stories of how, particularly the third book, how I think everybody arrived in the Algarve from a different route. And it, it's been it's fascinating bringing all those stories together because we've all got a history. We've all had our own stories and our lives. And it's really interesting to see how all these different people have arrived in the Algarve from totally different routes, um, which is, is fascinating. But we're all very happy and now we're here, I have to say. Uh, I, I, I suspect many more books to come, uh, interviewing all the characters of the Algarve. And of course, uh, uh, Ali recommending forums. Uh, check out at expatsportugal.com forward slash community. Um, and, and you'll meet characters like Paul Richards, the aforementioned Paul Richards. But that's great advice to Robin R. Uh, Circus School Paul says, uh, super Debbie, you've been you've been elevated to Super Debbie uh, tonight. Uh, <laughs> She's a superhero with fundraising fundraising superpowers. Uh, thank you for the yeah. nice work, Clive. From <laughs> uh, for, so yeah, thank we you. shouldn't worry about Carlos in Wolverhampton. He's going to be here in four weeks' time. Wink, wink. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Marty, hola, bon night. Greetings from Alaska tonight, everybody. Uh, our water shortage is an issue in the Algarve, given all the sunny days of regatta. Um, is drought an issue in the Algarve? For, seriously, for a yeah. moment? Mm. Yeah. Not right now, yeah. is it? I think really? but it has, it has <laughs> been. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and it's all under control? <laughs> That's what we want to hear. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yes. They're a bit cagey about that one, Martin. No, I think there, there was a there, there was a report. I haven't, I can't remember the actual details, but there was a report, wasn't there, not long ago, some weeks ago, that the the rain over the winter has substantially filled yeah. the dams, and I think oh the reservoirs yeah. for the next. I think the supplies for two years ahead. Yeah, yeah they said 159 percent of normal rainfall. That's what it was. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. The the um the barrage at Odiesha is still low, but the others are full. Hmm. There's a, there's a job for you, Debbie. Then next job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, great idea. Are you drinking the beer, Clive? <laughs> <laughs> That's why Clive gets paid the big bucks coming up like this and that. Fantastic. Uh, um, so there you go, Marty. Um, you know, you're right to make the, the the comment that it's a it's a hot, dry place. So there will be an issue with that. Um, for those of you who are asking about visas, 
uh, and NHR tax regimes. It's probably not the right moment right now, but I'll be glad to handle that on uh, Wednesday morning. Ask anything about Portugal. We're here tonight uh, celebrating the launch of Alison Sheldrake's new book, uh, A New Life in the Algarve, uh, her third book this evening. Uh, and we're taking questions about the Algarve as well. Robin's ready, look. Uh, leaning against an open door with Robin Arp <laughs> coming over soon. Uh, both mate, says Carlos. I don't know if that's both winks. Wink, wink, wink there. Uh, great info from Marty. Thanks to your panel. Uh, people loving you tonight, folks. Uh, Bonoit from Antonio F., real Portuguese person. Uh, we love to get the Portuguese seal of approval. Yasmin Guled from um, Denver, uh, Colorado wow. in the US. Wow. Qu question for Ivan tonight from Jennifer. Uh, and anyone else that's culinarily gifted? Uh, what, what's the. <laughs> 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 okay, let's ask let's ask Alison what her favorite vegan recipe is. Over to you, Alison. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna hand that one to Ivan. Very good. Okay. Well done. Um, there is a vegan scene here. It it's really burgeoning. Um, you know, there's definitely fish is big here, not vegan, but fruits and vegetables, grains, um, flowers, they build their own flowers. Absolutely. There is a great vegan scene here. There's vegan restaurants. You can, you know, obviously shop at grocery stores, make vegan at home. So yeah, absolutely. It's not just fish and meat. Yeah, that's well, actually that's actually one thing when you were talking earlier on, Carl, about how things have evolved, you know, over the years. That's definitely an area that I'd say mm -hmm. in the last ten years ha has expanded uh, amazingly. Cuisine. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it's so easy to think about Portugal as just fish and meat, um, and there's a lot of that here. But yeah, it, it it's kept up with the times. Yep. Don't worry, folks. For all you fish and meat fans, it's going to stay that way. Um, but <laughs> there, there, there are other things coming up to the scene as well. Yeah. Thanks for that, Clive. And, and, uh, You're not going to starve here. That's for sure. Excellent. No. There you go, Jennifer. Fantastic. And really enjoying the suggestions is Jennifer. Looking forward to it. Uh, Carlos is saying, uh, actually, that should be Lule, uh, Corenza, Tor, Salier Alta, Water Springs, etc. So many things to do. Here's an interesting question. We, we'll be concluding soon, folks. Uh, let's get some as many questions in as we can. And we need to talk to Ali before we go, of course, um, about her next book. Uh, hi, all. Great to hear from the people who live full time in the Algarve. It has the reputation of being a different country. But in reality, isn't that different uh, says andy so is it is it has it got a very separate algarvian identity like it's its own place would you say i think so mm. uh, yeah i know that i know that portuguese people that live in the north talk about algarve being a different country they yeah. joke about it yeah so, yeah, yeah i think so but they, having said that, that's true of all the other places as well. Ah, it, that's yeah. What, yeah. That's I was going to say that. Yeah. Go on, go on. So, no, but so, so is if you go to Madeira, for example, or the Azores. These are the. Oh, I know they're islands, but <laughs> but and, but certainly the the far north, the Alentejo, every every area's got its own identity. I think the difference here that people probably focus on is the fact that there are so many foreign residents here. Um, yeah. You know, more so than in most places, but. Yeah, I, and that's a good thing and that can be a good thing and not a good thing you know yes yeah looking for it you know we were talking about how easy it is to communicate and make friends and get along mm. you know that, that's very easy here yeah, yeah. and of Absolutely. all the districts of portugal i think they all prize their own regional identity with a, a shared portuguese ethic so i i i think you know it's true but there's still that beautiful dna portuguese DNA running through mm. all of Portugal and it's autonomous. Mm. Uh, Absolutely. Ola, Fiona, Ola from Langley Mill, where we're hoping to be over soon, down through Galicia to the Castelo Branco area, <laughs> coming in through that corridor. Uh, Paul, so true, Alison. Alison's comments are valid. A lot of support for Alison tonight. Shortages are not a problem, <laughs> uh, but water is very expensive. Don't install an English style lawn and expect it irrigated. Oh. <laughs> um, so, finally, folks, you've been, you've been amazing tonight. You got the <laughs> finger. <laughs> <laughs> don't be doing that don't be doing that <laughs> i did it i did that i made that mistake my life did it cost me yeah huge yeah. mistake so what did you what did, what did you do in the end did you replace it with it i sold i sold i managed to sell the house <laughs> <laughs> 
but, but actually, I mean, on a, on a serious uh, note, I, I, you know, I'd, I'd waited until I was in well into my forties before I even bothered to get a mortgage, and and I had a house built, and yeah. I and I there was a fant- I had a fantastic garden and a swimming pool, but I hadn't properly researched the costs. It was a, it was a big error by by myself and and my life. Even as much as a small detail, I had the skimmers at the wrong end of the pool, according to an expert friend of mine, because the skimmers were working against the wind, which meant that water would evaporate more quickly, which meant it had to be topped up more often. Oh. He's glad to be free of that. You can tell, Carl. Do your research. Yes, Max. I'm pleased not to be anyone making that mistake. Folks, I'm I'm going to have to stop passing on your questions and comments. They are so beautiful, though, I have to say. Um, Just a couple briefly. My girlfriend's vegetarian. It's a nightmare here. Restaurant ears look astonished and quizzically at her when she points out there's nothing on the menu she could use. I think you probably need to speak to Ivan about that one. Um, <laughs> as, as Jana wants to speak to you too, um, we need to get Relish Portugal and Wow Wines together. So there you go. That's that's a marriage made in heaven as far as I'm concerned. And yeah. uh, we w- people want to know, Alison, over to you for these final few minutes then of the show tonight. Um, thank you, folks, for being here. You contributors of the book. You've been absolutely wonderful. It's it's Ali's, Ali's the hub of this wheel, this amazing wheel. Uh, where can we buy the book? Uh, I'm curious, uh, says Max Flight. So where to do that? Well, it's on worldwide. So at the moment, obviously, with COVID, there aren't any opportunities really for kind of book signings in the Algarve. So it literally is just is on Amazon. But it's worldwide. You can get the ebook, there's paperback. For the first time ever, I've actually launched out and tried hardback as well. Um, oh. So actually, you can buy the hardback version. And there's a large print edition. If anyone struggles to find that, Amazon tends to hide the large print edition tucked away somewhere in the back of the world. But if you, if you do mm-hmm. want that larger print version, uh, there is one, just email me and I'll, I can uh, send you the link. So it's all, all, over, the, all over the place. It's, uh, it's, going, it's literally, we launched last Sunday. Um, yeah. So far the reviews are all five star on Amazon um, and the sales are going really well. So it's, it's, it was a real privilege putting this book together. And I have to say, I've loved tonight because we weren't quite sure what I knew I wanted to invite some of the people that were in the book to join me tonight. And I think what tonight has shown, the way we've just chatted and told our stories and enthused about life here in the Algarve, that's what the book is. There's 22 chapters like that, basically. I mean, these guys, without realising it, I think, have done a brilliant job in explaining what the book's actually about just by being here and chatting, because that's really what I wanted the book to be about. I wanted to be as if we were sat alongside friends and letting them tell their story and tell about their lives, how they got to the Algarve, what... The special parts about the Algarve that they love um, and particularly what thrilled me is the different stories that everyone had so you've got all sorts you've got a, a, a wine farm owner you've got someone that's set up a yurt farm you've got the people that run charities and magazines and blogs um, and lots of artists um, and lots of people that are doing innovative and really creative and different things and that's really what I wanted to bring together in the book is that sense I've met so many really fascinating interesting wonderful people since we moved that here and that's what i wanted the book to do and it, and it really felt like tonight thank you everyone because you've really showcased yeah. it in a really natural way which is which is what the book's about that's how i like my books to be they're friendly they're chatty you know they're, they're not uh, full of big words that you've got to go and look up in the dictionary but they're hopefully <laughs> that, that's my plan really it's sometimes you just want to sit down with a friend um and I've had some really lovely comments on my first couple of books that it, somebody told me it was like sitting down with me at a cafe with a Pashla Donata and a, and a Galau and just letting me tell them our story. So hopefully everyone will enjoy this book as much. Um, and I want to say right at the end as well, because one of the reasons Debbie's here is that 10% of all the revenue from the book is going to be given to the Alert of Charity. It was, it was something close to my heart as well. So okay. right important to me that that happens as well so that's part of the profit from the book go to debbie um thank you. I, i'm just i just want to say thank you to everyone really that's been a part of the book and part of the story and this journey and the algarve because it's it is a wonderful place to live and we are going to tease you all the time <laughs> <laughs> i know I'm, I, I'm ready for that I, even though i've moved a little bit closer it's not going to end is it um the the, the algarve people claiming it as god's own god's own place on earth um, and actually, you're all, you've all got to come back tomorrow night. Robin R says, this is my first time on your live broadcast. And you're such a 
I've decided I'll be back for more. So you've got to stay and be part of the show. <laughs> 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 the new new careers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're all, you're all very welcome. So, uh, yeah, it's been lovely to have you all here. Um, I'm just going to um, – I, I noticed there, Ali, you were saying there isn't a signing. I think there will be one day. There will be Portuguese wine. And I want to ask each of you as you leave now what you'll be bringing to the signing party. So, Jessica Dunn, what typically Algarvian thing might you bring um, before we say goodbye to you tonight to that to Al Alison's signing party where we get completely merry? <laughs> so, more of that. Superbox. There you go. Uh, she's bringing Superbox to the party. Fantastic. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Take care. Bye for now. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Uh, Thank you. There, you there goes Debbie, what will you be bringing to the party? Oh, gosh. Um, ginger. Ginger. <laughs> Very good. The liqueur. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. In the little chocolate cups, I hope. Oh, definitely. definitely Fabulous. Yeah. All, all the best <laughs> to you in, 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 with, your, with your charity and the fundraising. Take care and bye for now. Thank you very much. Ciao, ciao. Um, Ivan, what will you be bringing to the party, the signing party? I am definitely bringing the figs. Lots of figs. Ah. I'm going to bring my grill. We're going to grill them. We're going to put a little bit of goat cheese on them. Oh, my God. Go grill your pigs, <laughs> as they Portuguese say. That sounds delightful. Thank you, Eva. Lovely to see you again. Ciao, ciao. Bye for now. Bon appetit. There she goes. Uh, Clive, what's your gift to the signing party? I think my gift, is, I'm going to bring more beer, but it's going to be from the Algarve Rock Brewery in Faro, which is British, Portuguese, um, uh, craft beer brewery in Faro. And I'll bring some piri piri chicken from my village. And a few tunes, by the sound of it. Uh, Clive's oh, going yeah. to drop a bang in set as well as all of that. Clive, lovely to meet you. Take care. Bye for now. Thanks thank for you so much. Back. All the best. Uh, Ali, thank you so much for bringing these lovely people here tonight. It's been fabulous. It was. It's been it was everything I wanted it to be. Thank you so much, Carl, for hosting, for having us. Um, can I just say, if anyone wants to know any more, my website is my name, alisonsheldrake.com. So um, I, if you can see it on the screen, I have a Y stuck in the middle of that Alison there. So you just need to get that bit right. But alisonshelbrook.com. And for the signing party, I'm going to bring a plate full of pastel donatas. And I'm going to bring some of my chocolate balls. And you're going to have to read the book if you want to find oh, out. Chocolate balls. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, there's a real story in there about my chocolate balls. Yeah, you so there like you go. Chocolate balls. Thank you very much, Alison Sheldrake. Take care. Bye for now. All the best. Yeah, wasn't that fab fabulous? See you in the morning for the Good Morning Portugal show. Actually, where we'll be talking about volunteering in Portugal. Thank you, everybody, for your comments and questions tonight. You've been absolutely fabulous and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Take care and bye.